Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Mukesh English. Friends, in this video, I'm going to talk about the question paper of the open elective, question paper of the open elective titled Functional English Grammar and Study Skills. This open elective is prescribed for the Bangalore University students as well as maybe uh, other university also. And this question paper belongs to the second semester series or the second semester degree examination of all the courses. And it here refers to the August, September 2023. So let me tell you the syllabus is same and you will get multiple question paper uh, for this particular open elective. So let's begin it. Duration to our 30 minutes, maximum marks 60. So, let, so let's begin the discussion of the question paper of open elective, functional English grammar and study skills. Before that, let's know about the syllabus. What's the syllabus? There are three important units we have here. The unit number one is titled as Functional English Grammar, which has the five sub-themes, grammar of spoken and written English, the basic sentence patterns in English, SVO, SV, SVOC, SVOA, SVOAC. Then functions of different phrases. We have noun phrase, verb phrase, adjective phrase, adverbial, adverbial phrase, prepositional phrase. Then we have the clauses. Then we have verbs. There we have tense, models, and the functions. Then the unit two or the section two, writing skills, where here you will have the discussion of writing as skills, functional usage of writing, writing process, models of writing. Then we have here, the third section here refers to the reading skills. Here you will be learning the meaning and process of reading, the strategies and the methods of improving the reading skill, the sub-skills of reading, scheming, scanning, extensive reading, and intensive reading. So this is the syllabus. Go through once again. And you will get, uh, I have done around the four, the five, I think this is the fourth question paper I'm going to solve here. So if you go through the description box, you will get Another three question papers links, the, the three solved question papers links. And if you go through those four question papers, I think that's enough to prepare for this paper's uh, examination. You can easily get the best marks because I have seen that uh, many questions are repeated and uh, some topics are very much limited where there's no choice that these questions have to repeat, uh, have to be repeated, I would say. So better my suggestion is here, uh, the four uh, question papers I solved and you can go through those four question papers. That's going to help you a lot. Okay, so with this note, let's begin the discussion of this question paper. Now, there are three sections. One section is here. You have 10 questions. 10 questions. They are the compulsory questions. Very much compulsory. You don't have the choice here. And the each question has the weightage for two marks, right? And you can answer these questions either in one word or in one sentence. Maybe depends on the need of the answer, particular question. So 10 questions, 20 marks without any choice. Section 1. Mention any two advantages of written language. So which are the advantages we have? Authoritative document, clear interpretation, easy to preserve. These are the two advantages of written language. Then you need to expand the SVC or SVA. So there are five sentence structure pattern. SVC here refers to subject, verb, complement. SVA here refers to subject, verb, and adverb. Question number three, define an adverb clause. An adverb clause is a group of words that is used to change or qualify the meaning of an adjective, a verb, a clause, or another adverb or any type of word or phrase with the exception of determiners or adjectives that directly modify the nouns. So you need to buy hard the definition. There's no other way. Question number four, <clears throat> what is scanning? Scanning is a reading technique in which one takes a quick look of the document so as to find the specific information content in the written material. So they might also ask, what is the scheme, scheming? If you see other question papers, you'll get scheming. So more or less, there are limited questions. 
the basic building blocks of a sentence are so which are the basic building blocks of a sentence subject and verb are the basic building blocks of a sentence but before that we should know primarily clauses are the building blocks of a sentence and a clause is a group of words which consist a subject and a verb so we can say the basic building blocks of a sentence are subject and verb question number 6 what is a homophone uh, how is homophone different from homonym homophones are the words which have the same pronunciation but different meanings and different spellings for example t h e i r t h e r e h e r h e r e so t h e r e there there same um, same spelling sorry different spelling and different meanings but same pronunciation called here homophones what's the meaning of homonyms ulta homonyms are the words that have the same spelling and same pronunciation but different meaning for example there is a word called band b n d band so band has two contextual meaning one one band is used to refer to a musical group one band can also be used to refer to a ring so this is how this is the difference between homophone and homonym now question number 7 give any two characteristics of academic writing so the characteristics of academic writing are formal tone accuracy objectivity complexity and research now what is the meaning of cc and bc in email writing cc refers to carbon copy bcc refers to blind carbon copy question number 9 mention any two types of paragraphs so we have four types of paragraphs you can write any two descriptive narrative persuasive expository types of paragraphs then the last question we have here define verbal phrase so a verbal phrase or a, some day we can also call it a verb phrase verb phrase or verbal phrase consist a verb or the main verb which is followed by a modal or any other auxiliary for example walked a word walked another word is here can see had been waiting so this is called here there's a the walked is a past form can see here the verb followed by the modal had been writing followed by the uh, helping verb so that's the meaning of verbal phrase so these were the 10 questions without any choice you have here two marks each then 20 marks now you have a choice here answer any four questions each question is for five marks you have about six questions will be given variety of six questions whichever you like you can opt here so four questions you have to attempt and each has a weightage for five marks so now we shall have the discussion of the five marks questions question number 1 very interesting write a dialogue between a mother and a son on deciding a place for a vacation so you need to develop a dialogue i'm sorry sorry i you need to develop a dialogue between a mother and a son who are going to decide a place for vacation so you can pause the video you can go through this dialogue which i have tried here you can also write in your own way i would say that when you when you write a dialogue remember that you there should not be any kind of punctuation error that's very important and try to make use of quite semi formal language not to formal depends on uh, between which are the persons they are going to converse so this dialogue is for five marks then draft an email to your cousin inviting him to your college annual day so email writing where you need to write the subject you need to address the person hey nisha i hope this email finds you well I wanted to extend a warm invitation to you for our upcoming college annual day celebration. It's a special event where we showcase various talents and achievements of our college community. It's scheduled on 1st March 2024 at 10 a.m. We have a line of exciting performances, cultural activities and some surprises in store. it would mean a lot to me to have you there to share in this memorable occasion 
please let me know if you are able to attend and if you need any further details or, or assistance with accommodations. I'm looking forward to catching up with you and having a great time together. Warm regards, Shima. So you need to, uh, you need to draft the email in this manner. So generally we don't write two address. So you can, I have forgot to mention your two address, TO2. So any email ID you can mention. So that's about five marks, draft any uh, email writing, any email given on the topic. Then identify the tenses of the following sentences. So the very scorable question uh, sentence will be given and you need to just mention that which tense is here. So the teacher completed the syllabus on time. So which tense is here? Simple past tense. How do we find out the ED form or we say complete, completed, completed. So completed here refers to the past tense, simple past tense. Ria is watching a movie, is watching. It's a present tense, ing form, continuous. So present continuous tense. Then Jagan will shift to Mumbai next week. It's talking about future. And we have two identifier here. One is will and one is next week. So both uh, indicate here that indicate here that it's a simple future tense. Then the train leaves at 10.30 a.m. every day. So the word every day denotes that it's a simple present tense as well as leaves. Then the last one, Sony was helping them past continuous tense. So this question is very scoring. Better to attempt this question also. So this is for five marks, each for one. Then you need to fill up the auxiliary verbs. A blank is given. And here this is very, um, I would say, mind boggling. Uh, question because you will find here uh, many uh, many multiple auxiliary so sometimes sometimes you may get uh, grace marks also let us see how blank the, the taxi come so I thought a lot and I finally I thought will is the most suitable here because the question says suitable auxiliary so I would say suitable is here will will the taxi come generally taxi does not come right taxi is driven so it's a very grammatically very wrong question, I would say. It's going to rain. You can shut the window. So you can shut the window, right? Will you please help me? Then he can speak four languages. We can also say he could speak four languages. Both are correct. Then can I borrow this book? May I borrow this book? May I is also correct. May I borrow this book? So in this question, you will get 99.99% approximately. Sometimes you may also write the two answers. So I, what I feel so, you may get the best marks here. So this is for five marks. Next, explain the idea content in the given theme. So this is a fifth question. So here, a uh, topic is given. It's very simple language, simple way. I would say one uh, theme is given and you need to develop paragraph. Some sort of proverb, some sort of catchy line will be given and you need to develop a paragraph. So idea is here, friend in need is a friend indeed, right? So what can we write? We can write a lot about it. So you can pause the video and you can go through this paragraph. You can write better than what I have written. So it's an individual person's writing skill, how to write. So this is also stands for five marks. So like this, you have here five questions, but you need to opt here how many? You need to opt here only four questions. So, so the section one refers to two marks, 10 questions, 20 marks. Section two, uh, four questions, five marks, 20. So we have discussed here totally 40 marks questions as of now. Now we are moving to the third section where you need to write the answers in detail. I would say essay type questions in simple way. Here you will be given here only three questions and you need to opt the two questions. You need to select two questions each for 10 marks. So remaining 20 marks questions, the choices are very, le very less, but don't worry. If you go through these four question papers, definitely the questions will be here and there. The remaining uh, three question papers, videos, links, you can see in the description box. That's going to help you a lot. Please check the description box for the remaining three videos, links. And I bet that if you go through those three videos, definitely you'll get best marks, I would say. Now, which are the strategies 
and methods to improve reading skills. I've forgotten to mark here question mark. Please forgive me. Which are the strategies and methods to improve reading skills? So you need to mention here the list of the strategies and the list of the methods to improve the reading skills. So uh, improving reading skills is essential for comprehension, critical thinking, overall knowledge acquisition. So here we have few strategies and methods to, to enhance reading skills. Number one, we first strategy we have here, we assess. So what is VSS? Vocabulary self-selection strategy. That means improving vocabulary is very essential to develop an advanced level of learning of a language. This strategy allows the readers to choose any word from a text that they are reading and learn more about it. So, so readers maintain a vocabulary logbook or a book to record. So you can select any, any particular word and you write down in a notebook. And this is one of the self-selection strategy, VSS. Second strategy we have here, one minute, yeah, story maps. So a story map is a technique which is similar to mind mapping, where the graphic presentations are used to visually organize a text. For example, if you're reading a novel or a short story as a part of the prescribed syllabus, you would draw a story map, identifying the plot, character, setting, etc. That's going to help you to read the text carefully. So story map provides story maps provide readers with the elements of the story and help in better comprehension. So a story map is similar to the mind mapping where you make some graphical presentation, you make some cartoons and you try to relate each and every character. So that's a very good technique. Next technique we have here compare and contrast diagrams. This strategy is going to help you to find out the similarities and the differences so that you can increase the deep thinking among the readers. And uh, like you can use a Venn diagram. The use of Venn diagram is going to uh, help you to scan a text to summarize and to make the notes also. Then the next technique we have here, SQ3R. SQ3R is a method and very uh, famous method which consists of five steps here, survey, query, read, recall, and review. So what is survey here? So the step one, the very first step is here that uh, to reading involves here the quick preview of the text. This could be reading the introduction, titles, headings, looking at the picture or charts. So this survey is going to help to activate any minor information that you previously know about the text. So you are going to just have a look at the, the introduction, title, heading, or the picture you are going to, or the chart, and you are going to grab some information. So you're reading indirectly, that's called your survey. Second query. Query means to say, uh, reader's curiosity. If the reader feels that it's very much interesting, the reader will start reading further. So the reader starts making predictions about the text, I, by asking questions which are answered after, after the completion of the reading. So when the human mind is actively searching for answers, it becomes engaged in the learning process, which in turn helps the active reading of the text. It means to say, there'll be more curiosity. You'll be asking the questions once you finish the reading. That's the, that is a step here, query. Third step is here, read. Read means to say, intensive reading. The goal of this step is to begin reading with a few paragraphs or a section at a time, depending on how the material is quite depth one, intense material. In this step, it's very important to search for the answers as the reading goes on. So while reading, identifying certain keywords are also going to help you in remembering the content. I'll give a very nice example. Sometimes in, in the general English, generic English, you have the comprehension passage. So what do many students do? do? Some students, they won't read the passage first. They will read the questions first. So these questions already fit in the mind. And while reading the, the passage, they are storing the answers in the mind. So this is called here step number three, read. Step number four is here recall. It's very easy to remember also recall. After reading few paragraphs or any section, it's very important to stop reading and you take time to recall so that means to say you are trying to summarize a section in your own words 
and you are also sharing the main idea of the, of the text with somebody who has not read. So this is going to help you to remember more. Next, the fifth is your review. So once the reading is complete, it's important to take some time to review. And the process of reviewing is an act of evaluating what have you understood through the discussion, question answers, and sometimes the written review also. So sometimes the reader can write a brief summary. They can have the discussion. They can talk to the fellow persons. So this method is seen in a classroom. So generally, when the teacher finishes the lesson, the teacher asks the questions to review that whether the students have understood or not. So this is SQ3R method of to improve the reading skill. So this is the question number one, and that's very, very important question. Now we are coming to a very technical question. What are clauses? And you need to answer with the different clauses with the examples. You need to remember here the examples. Before that, let's know what's the meaning of clause. Clauses are the building blocks of sentences. A clause is a group of words which consist a subject and a verb. For example, ecology is a science because pollution, cause, pollution causes cancer. So there's a clause here. We find your subject. We find here the verb also. So we have the very first clause, noun clause. A noun clause performs the function of a noun in a sentence or sometimes it functions in a nominal group. So noun clauses, sorry, noun clause, uh, clause stand as a direct or indirect object, nominatives or object of a preposition, subject of the verb or the object of the verb, subject or object, complement, or we can say prepositional complement. So we have the answer that he will come today is uncertain. So here that he will come today, it's a noun phrase. Going home at this time, it's a noun phrase. Why we came here, it's a noun phrase. Second, we have here adjective phrase. This clause, this clause does not, does the work of adjectives. And by this, it also has the name adjectival clause. Adjectives are the words that describe or give more information about nouns or pronouns in a sentence. So we can divide the relative clause into two categories. So there are two types of relative clause. One is a restrictive and uh, another is the non-restrictive. So sometimes we call it non-qualifying also. So here in the sentence, the meat which he spent so much to buy was already spoiled. So which he spent so much to buy is the adjective clause. Then next sentence, who delivered the fire servant? Whose bag was stolen? So these are the adjective clause. Then adverbial clause. Adverbial clause is a clause which performs the function of an adverb in a sentence. What is adverb? An adverb modifies the verb in a sentence. It answers the questions like where, when, why, how, etc. The adverbial clause has a different types. These include here adverbial clause of time, place, manner, reason, condition, concession, purpose, comparison. Examples, while the driver was making a call, it's an adverbial clause. When she saw her lost, long lost son, it's an adverbial clause. Last one we have here, we, we also call it as a propositional phrase as well as a propositional clause. Generally, we don't have propositional clause. We have, it's called as a propositional phrase. Prepositional phrase is a group of words which consists of preposition, its object, and any words that's going to modify the object. So most of the time, a prepositional phrase modifies a verb or noun. And these two kinds of prepositional phrase are called adverbial phrase or as well as adjectival phrase. So we have prepositional phrase like he arrived in time. So in time is a prepositional phrase. By the lake is a prepositional phrase. After the green is the prepositional phrase. So this is the answer of the question number two, the types of clause. Last question we have here, what are the most common errors in sentence construction? What are the most common errors in sentence construction? And the errors are here. So errors are here. Number first error we have here, fragments. A sentence fragment, a sentence fragment lacks a subject or a verb. So sometimes a sentence fragment will not have a subject or a verb. 
For mm-hmm. example, the red pen that the girl had, it's a fragment. The girl had a red pen, yeah, sorry, the girl had a red pen, it's a complete sentence. But the red pen that the girl had, it's not a complete sentence, right? Then second error is here, run on, run ons. A run-on sentence is not just a long sentence. Run-ons can be short. A run-on sentence simply does not use conjunctions or punctuation correctly so that the two clauses are fused and unclear. For example, the train jumped the track and the passengers jumped the track. The passengers were not injured. It's a run-on sentence. It doesn't have the conjunction here. It doesn't have the punctuation here. So the correct answer is, is here. The train jumped the track full stop. The passengers were not injured or we can say the train jumped the track comma, but the passengers were not injured. Third error we find sometimes comma, comma splices. A comma splice is a specific form of run on sentence where a comma is used incorrectly. So the train jumped the track, the comma, the passengers were not injured is an example of comma, uh, sorry, is an example of comma splice. So there's no necessity to use comma here. Then dangling participles. One more thing I would like to see is they they might ask the two marks question, what is comma splices? What is dangling participles? So you need to remember the meaning also. A dangling participle is a sentence where an adjective or the participle is used incorrectly. So it's very much unclear that which noun is modifying or which noun it modifies. For example, topped with, with cheese, comma, I ate the I ate the burger. So because of the placement of the modifying par- participle, this sentence reads as though. I was topped with cheese instead of the burger. So that's going to give a very good, very very wrong meaning. Next, we have here faulty parallelism. Parallel sentence construction uses the same structure and format in all parts parts of a sentence. So the parts agree with each other grammatically. For example, in the sentence, the book was both fun to read and for talking about. So here, the the both has not been used, has both requires to also, to read, right? So, and it's not placed at a very particular place. So it could be paired with the second infinitive verb to make a parallel sentence. Then we have here punctuation. So sometimes we find here misused apostrophe, misused quotation, commas are used in correctly conjunctions are not used properly uh, phrases are not used properly so that comes under the punctuation so these are the common sentence errors we find in particular language or in the english language so this is how you have here three questions for 10 mark uh, three questions and out of the three questions you can opt only two questions where the enhancement of the reading skill is very important and each question is, is here for 10 marks So I repeat here the section one, 10 marks, two questions, section two, five marks, four questions, section three, 10 marks, two questions. This is how you'll be having here 60 marks question paper. So friends, this is how I have tried to solve the 2023 uh, functional English uh, question paper, open elective question paper. And I have already solved, I have already solved, I'm sorry, uh, I have already solved the last uh, three question papers also, and the links of those question papers are already already in the description box. And I'm sure that if you go through those four question papers, you can easily pass or get the best marks in the open elective functional English because the syllabus is very limited and most of the questions are much repeated one. So thank you so much for watching this video. Click on the like button and write something in the comment box if you really feel that this video is really worthy and very much good to score well please do write something in the comment box and if you have not yet subscribed my channel to thoda sa subscribe kar dijiye please do subscribe thank you so much wish you good luck for the next examination thank you once again dear friends thank you so much for watching this video you can reach me at mukesh english@gmail.com 
please do subscribe the channel click on the like button for more videos on literature workbook pronunciation grammar communication skills presentation skills interview skills stay in tune with mukesh english thank you once again